And we're talking about uh, Transnet here and what the Minerals Council South Africa has warned once again that the infrastructure challenges at Transnet rail and port operations are putting a strain on mining companies. Speaking at the Joburg in Daba, CEO Roger Baxter said opportunities to the value of about 50 billion rand have been lost so far this year. He joins me now on the line for more on this. I mean, it's a really bleak outlook that you paint uh, for the mining industry in particular, Roger, just because of those inefficiencies uh, that we are seeing and Transnet. Before we get into other issues, the impact of jobs as well in the mining sector, surely that is also affected by those inefficiencies. If were, sorry, I, I didn't hear the second part of the question, but uh, there's no doubt in my mind, uh, in our minds, that uh, when we look at the infrastructure constraints and the service constraints that are taking place, this year, target versus actual performance, we're looking at something like a 50 billion rand difference. Uh, that's 50 billion rand of which probably about 10 billion would have gone to Treasury. Um, and if we look at it on the basis of nameplate capacity versus actual performance, the gap there uh, is more than 100 billion. We've, we've talked about a number of 150 billion, of which 30 billion extra taxes would go to government. But we're not sitting here criticizing Transnet. What we are doing is we are focusing on what the real solutions are. And we believe that uh, through proper partnerships with Transnet, with government, uh, we can jointly solve the problem because we are effectively joined at the hip. We can't do without them. They can't do without us. And we just need to work much more effectively as a team uh, to really address the specific issues that are um, affecting Transnet and obviously Transnet port terminals. And obviously Transnet in the last while has acknowledged that it cannot go at it alone and does need to work closely with uh, private uh, businesses and of course is opening up Transnet for investment. Tell us a little bit about the initiatives that Transnet has uh, put forward to business in South Africa and some of those that are actually underway and we are starting to see some or other fruit from partnerships. So I think, I think at this particular stage, if I look at the ESCOM example, uh, we've got a almost a full liberalization story about fixing ESCOM, which is obviously critical, but ESCOM is not the solution to the problem. ESCOM is part of the solution. It's private sector investment, which is going to help drive the game. And so on the, on, the, on the rail and logistics side, I think we're not quite in the same space yet. I mean, absolutely, Transnet and the recent rail policy uh, white paper uh, are focused on, on opening up opportunities over time. And I mean, Transnet has issued a request for tenders on both the development on, of a new port on the Western seaboard, uh, as well as obviously uh, the manganese export terminal. Those are starting bits. I think that's really important. But we need to get some of the basics right and the basics focus on the maintenance of the existing lines. Government actually playing, and we agree with Transnet on this. I mean, this is a point that Porsche Derby the group CEO made today, we agree with the view that government should actually be putting some money as the 100% shareholder into the infrastructure and maintenance of the infrastructure and the network itself. But we can work together in partnership to help uh, with the expertise and capability that we have on the mining side on areas like um, maintenance of the infrastructure, you know, getting uh, the rolling stock back on track, um, you know, working with the locomotives. We are working in partnership with them on some of the crime-related issues, uh, particularly on the coal line, as an example. So, again, it's all about collaborative partnership, but taking it to the next level. That's really what we're asking for. I think one of the important things that those businesses watching this interview, Roger, timelines. You speak about the white paper that was put out by Transnet, the tenders that have been put out for issue. Um, in terms of timelines, is it two, three years that we're going to start to see a little bit of a more smoother operation at both the rail and the port uh, authority? I think that there are obviously some more fundamental issues that uh, need to be dealt with. I mean, we must just also appreciate that Transnet has, has to deal with a decade of stat capture, which has mm. obviously had a huge impact on their business, both in ports and in the rail system itself. And is one of the critical issues that's affecting the, the availability of locomotives with nearly 300 locomotives out of service at the moment. So uh, our particular point on this is that through much more focused targeted programs uh, on each of these specific areas um, and given the progress that we've made in some of our partnerships on, for example, dealing with the crime issues, we can resolve the challenges. But again, it's about the speed of implementation and it's working together because it's not going to happen by Transnet itself. I mean, Transnet has acknowledged uh, they have their own particular challenges and, and constraints. And from our side, you know, we, we're playing a, an international game here. We have to be globally competitive. This is not about us giving funds into Transnet and Transnet deciding what to do with them. We think we can work with them, helping with the funding side, uh, in co-governance and determination models, 
which are win-win for the country and which get our exports up, enable us to employ. We estimate that if we can get um, export performance up to nameplate capacity, we probably will create another 40,000 jobs in mining alone. Um, and it's good for Transnet's business. It helps you know, with a lot more volume on their network. It helps them. But obviously some of the fundamental issues, and I think it was well addressed by the group CEO today and in our, in our discussions yesterday, um, in terms of maintenance programs, you don't maintain things. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that, that cumulatively the, the maintenance backlog becomes cumulative and we need to address those backlogs uh, in partnership. That's absolutely correct. Another issue, apart from the maintenance issue and the infrastructure that's really failing, uh, a large component of the mining industry, Roger, I'm sure you've been watching the news around the strike at Transnet. Workers, uh, it says, have illegally uh, started striking at its uh, uh, operations at Richards Bay. Tungela Resources indicating in SN's announcement today that it's good to operate for about a week, but should things go beyond a week, it's going to be very problematic for it because of all the stockpiles that exist and uh, the fact that it cannot be moving things out of the country uh, to its export markets because uh, there's not much happening at the ports. Um, Surely that's a concern as well, um, given the fact that we are seeing that Transnet saying it really doesn't have money to go beyond what it's offered, that being the 3% currently on the table. You're absolutely spot on. I mean, listen, it is a double blow. It's Mm. the blow that we are not able to meet uh, export target performance. Um, you know, and, and in coal alone, we uh, have an export target of some 59 million tons, and we're going to probably just achieve something just over 50 if we're lucky. And if a strike, so a double blow of a strike will actually be extremely negative, not only for the mining sector, but for the country as a whole uh, and for the fiscus. So our hope is that uh, the Transnet leadership team, you know, working with the trade unions, can find some sort of practical, workable solution because it's actually in the country's interest to do so. Um, so, you know, we're urging all parties to, to come sort of work to some workable, workable arrangement that uh, we avoid a strike and focus on getting our export performance back to target. That's got to be the, that's got to be the criticality. These double blows are not good for the economy. They're not, not good for us from an investment destination point of view. Um, and so we, we have discussed that, and those, those issues are on the table about how we get ourselves back on track. No mm-hmm. pun intended. Yeah, no far. And a, a final thought from you, uh, Roger. You engage with these mining bosses constantly, um, and many, like Sabanya Stillwater, say they do have cash that they would love to invest in South Africa's economy. But because of uncertainty, this has really held them back somewhat. What does the conversation sound like now? Is it more of the same, or is there a little bit more optimism around South Africa's economy, just given um, rest we're seeing um, from trans- former Transnet executives and other states? capture role players. Is there a little bit more optimism about investment in South Africa by the mining sector? So I think uh, in, the, in the last couple of years, um, where we have seen the mining sector bail out the economy. Um, we've created 6,000 jobs. We've paid 130 billion rands in taxes, which uh, kind of like makes the Minister of Finance fi- uh, smile every time he sees me. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, we've managed the COVID pandemic exceptionally well, working in partnership with government. Um, but we do have a number of issues that we need to address uh, to, be, to, to restore ourselves as a globally competitive mining nation. Uh, there's work that we need to do on eliminating some of the regulatory constraints. You know, it takes 354 days, working days, to get a prospecting right in South Africa, if you're lucky, wow. compared to 40 days in Botswana. Now, so, so that is a conversation that we're having with government. But again, I'm going to raise the issue. It comes back to you can have a conversation and you can agree that we need to get ourselves more competitive. It's about the implementation in government and the collaborative partnerships that the private sector can bring in, for example, on a new minerals cadastral system, which we've, we've urged government to, you know, to, to buy an off-the-shelf system, uh, which would enable us to get these things done very quickly. We've got two very good globally competitive companies in South Africa could, that could do that system for us you know, in the next six months. So there are some constructive discussions taking place, but... Uh, We need to appreciate that there are some specific constraints. On rail, there's definitely a set of constraints, and we should be talking about restoring performance and getting back to growth. In electricity, it is a binding constraint that makes South Africa effectively an ex-growth country. Mm. But we we are addressing those particular constraints. I mean, mining alone has 6.5 gigawatts of projects uh, valued at 100 billion rand that we have our companies agreeing to invest in over the next three to five years. And so the private sector is willing to play a role in unlocking those constraints. And in energy, we've got the solutions on the table. And we'll see some progress on that as we go forward. 
And in the rail side, we, we're having good discussions, but I think it's important to take those to the next step of actual implement, implementable plans, which really take us to the next level. Mm. Roger Baxter, as always, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Very interesting insights.